Thanks for staying with us. Let's dig in now. And government says it is taking steps to protect the investment of citizens as it pushes for a deal with the International Monetary Fund, IMF. President Kofado expressed confidence in his negotiators to see through a bailout that will prevent the loss of funds of persons and institutions that have invested in various public funds. An anonymous two-minute audio message on a WhatsApp platform predicting a so-called haircut on government bonds sent all of us into banks and forex bureaus to dump our CDs. And before we knew it, the CD had depreciated even further. All of us can play a part in helping to strengthen the CD by having confidence in the currency and avoiding speculation. Let us keep our CD as the good store of value it is. To those who make it a habit of publishing falsehoods, which result in panic in the system, I say to them that the relevant state agencies will act against such persons. I also want to assure all Ghanaians that no individual or institutional investor, including pension funds, in government treasury bills or instruments, will lose their money as a result of our ongoing IMF negotiations. There will be no haircuts. So I urge all of you to ignore the false rumors. Just as in the banking sector cleanup, government insured that the 4.6 million depositors affected by the exercise did not lose their deposits. So that's the, the big assurance there that's been given. This comes on the back of projections from financial analysts which have painted a rather gloomy picture for investors amid talks around the deal. Ghana is currently at the doors of the IMF for a possible $3 billion bailout amid intensifying hardship, skyrocketing fuel prices, a rising cost of living and a depreciating city. Well, Kofi AJ, data analyst with our research desk joins me in studio. We'll take a look at that big assurance and the feasibility of this particular assurance. Mm. But first, this issue about haircut, how low a cut, what really is the haircut? Let's go through the education. Well, let me find no haircut, but what really is a haircut? Mm -hmm. And I want to create this scenario for us to really analyze so that the person watching us at home will really understand this. So it simply means that I'll come to you, MFI, and say, MFI, I am really broke. Mm -hmm. I want to buy a new bicycle, and I need, let's say, 1,000 CDs. If you lend me 1,000 CDs, by the end of 2023, I'll give you 1,000 CDs, and I'll give you an additional 15%. Then you give me this, you know, 1,000 CDs, anticipating that I'll pay, and I'll also give you a 15% uh, as interest. Okay. And I'll come to you, you know, somewhere April 2023, and I'll tell the MFI, I am broke. I am not sure I'll be able to pay your 1,000 CDs. So mm -hmm. let's have an arrangement. And the arrangement is that um, let's have some haircuts. It means that the 1,000 CDs that I'm supposed to give you as a principal, can you agree that I'll be bankrupt? So can I give you 800 CDs? It's and then also thousand. cut, maybe cut your um, interest, you know, the well. interest maybe to 5% uh, from the 15%. And because you know if I become ban bankrupt, I will not be able to pay the entire thousand cities and 800 cities will be better off. I'd you probably will this. agree that okay. 800 cities will be, you know, ideal. That's just a haircut mm -hmm. um, in terms of what we are talking about here. But okay. let's look at Ghana as a country. Why is it so important for us uh, to have this conversation? If you look at this beautiful table showing um, not a very favorable figure mm -hmm. uh, for us as a country, the total debt stock in, in billion dollars around 53.2 billion. And if you look at external components alone, it's around 52.6 and domestic components, 74, 47.4%. Uh, okay. Now, I want us to look at this sheet. We gleaned this information from the Ministry of Finance, their annual debt report for 2021. So if we say there's going to be a haircut, and if there is a haircut, who are those going to really uh, suffer from this action? So we look at this data sheet. And, you know, we have different bonds that we float around. We have mm -hmm. the Esla bonds, the Dachi bonds. Let's just first look at the Esla bonds. Okay. So if you look at the Esla bonds from 2020 and 2021, the figures 
are a million Ghana cities. And if you see a thousand, it means it's in billion. So if you look at domestic sector, the domestic sector in 2017 was holding about 7.6 billion Ghana CDs of the domestic debt that was purchased. The percentage was 99.9. .9. If you look at 2021, this number now rises from 7.6 to now 8 point, somewhere 8.7 billion Ghana CDs. Hmm. And if you look at banks having their bonds with the government of Ghana, banking sector, deposit money banks, it's around 3 billion. Uh, Bank of Ghana doesn't have anything as of 2021 with, um, as, as far as, you know, bonds are concerned. Non-bank sector, rural banks, and MFA, rural banks, you mm -hmm. know, they, they really struggle for capital. They have about, you know, 0.2% of their funds with government as, you know, investment in terms of bonds. Now, if you look at those who are also holding the Dachi bonds, okay. Dachi bonds, the same thing. Foreigners are holding about, you know, 2.5 billion Ghana CDs of our Dachi bonds and domestic, 2 points, also 5 billion CDs. And then, you know, banking sector having about 1.2 billion over there. So it tells you that majority of the funds that these banks, you know, um, collect, when they yeah, are attracted by nice interest rate, they really want to buy bonds. And mm. then they have the bonds with government and they're anticipating that government will pay them back and so I'm not sure they will be happy if there's a haircut, a haircut. just because of an IMF. Program. But how about most of us who hold T-bills? Well, T-bills, the same thing, because okay. you buy a T-bill as an individual, you buy it with the bank. Okay. And the bank will also go ahead to also to go and buy also a T-bill from, from government. So if your, your bank is affected, probably definitely you also be affected as an individual. Who and, and that's the big assurance we're getting mm. uh, from the president so last no night, haircut. that no haircut. But how feasible would that be uh, once we are going to the IMF uh, for a bailout? Let's bring in Professor Gottfried Bopping. He's an economist, knows all about this, these negotiations, joins us via phone. We're grateful uh, for your time here on Joy News Prime, Professor Gottfried Bopping. So please simply tell us, is it possible to get this particular IMF deal when we know that we are supposed to do debt restructuring, the debt sustainability analysis? Can we do all this without a haircut? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening to your cherished uh, viewers. Um, that's an interesting question, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's more or less like the take home from the president's speech yesterday or address. Um, so, what is known and what the data tells us is that our debt is unsustainable. Now, IMF doesn't lend to a country with debt unsustainability. And therefore, if your debt level is dashed to be unsustainable, you do you go through the debt sustainability analysis. They have a number of indicators. Some of them are a bit more forward-looking. Some are also a bit um, conservative. The conclusion that has, uh, we have is that our debt is unsustainable. Mm. The DSD itself, the debt sustainability analysis itself, will point to a certain direction in terms of how do you restore debt sustainability but then over a certain period, what period? Let's say over four years. If we are saying over four years, the IMF will be interested in the fact that by the time you exit the program, you have attained debt sustainability, also close to it. So if you look at three years or four years, that would then tell you the level of adjustment that you have to make to apply to the current situation in order to reach a debt sustainability, let's say, in four years. Now, let's go back to what the president told us yesterday. Let's forget about the statement, the categorical statement that there will be no haircut. I believe that the, the president gave himself up by providing further and better particulars. Where is that coming from? Then the president told us that they are looking at bringing our debt to GDP ratio from where it is now to about 55% by 2028. 
the framework then, the time span is six years. Hello? I'm with you. Yeah, the time span is six years. They are also looking at, in terms of the external debt servicing obligation, they are looking at bringing it down to about 18% or so, probably below policy dependency threshold, mm -hmm. right? Currently, it's more than 30%. Okay. If you look at overall debt service to revenue ratio, it is, uh, in terms of, and you relate that to non oil tax revenue, it's more than 60%. This must be below 24%. Mm. Now, if these are the threshold or the targets, the benchmark under the program, then there is no way that we can crawl back from 104% by the end of this year. Don't forget, by the end of this year, our debt to GDP ratio will be more than 100%. Mm -hmm. And more so, it may not be simply because we are taking more fresh debt. The depreciation of the CD will manifest explicitly in additional debt by the end of this year, if, if you look at uh, valuation effect or if you market to the market. So if you put all that together and you look at debt from general government approach, your debt to GDP ratio will be more than 100%. Okay. Now, reducing it from 100% or let's say 104% of GDP to 55% in six years. Hello? Yes. That is work. But, but, but Prof, really, um, the concern then for many of us is what this categorical statement from the president then portends for our discussions with the IMF and our possibility of actually getting that staff level agreement by the end of the year? Look, typically, I will go with the president. Mm -hmm. He's the president of this country. He will sign off. So if the president of this country says that there will be no haircut, it's like we should take it hook, like and sinker. Let's, let's, like, let's go with it. But why are we not going with it then? It's because the reality on the ground it's at variance with what the president told us yesterday. I'll tell you why. The, the fund is telling the government to prove your debt sustainability. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, the, pre, the government finds itself in an uncomfortable situation. Uh, debt restructuring, which would entail haircut, is really not something government ordinarily would want to go for. I believe it's part of why the negotiation probably has delayed and the, everybody is telling us, oh, debt sustainability analysis has not been concluded. Mm -hmm. Because the offer on the table, which is debt restructuring with considerable haircut, is not something government is comfortable with okay. and want to accept and impose on the system. Now, if you don't want to do that, now, if the president says that there will be no haircut, what the president needed to have told us yesterday is what is the alternative? What is it that the government then is going to do in order to reach debt sustainability by 2028 that he has told us? Okay. What is the alternative? If you don't demonstrate the alternative, that will achieve the same result or a better result as doing debt restructuring, then what you told us yesterday would not, would not uh, 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 ignite a market reaction. Okay. We'll leave that, it here that's for where the difference is. Okay. Now, hello? You can yes. conclude on that, Prof. Yeah. So, and that is why the IMF, together with the government, are op more optimistic about reaching a staff level agreement by the end of this year. A staff level agreement is not the same as a program. Okay. Reaching a staff level agreement doesn't mean that IMF will start disbursing the dollars to us. No. Now, how did we get to know this? In the case of Zambia, Zambia was in a similar situation like Ghana. They, were, they had reached debt unsustainability. So when they agreed a staff level agreement, it was then the, the, on the part, uh, required that Zambia would engage with their creditors and reach a, a, some kind of agreement with creditors on debt restructuring. It was only after that that the program, uh, the, uh, the staff level agreement, together with that understanding, went to the IMF executive board for approval. That alone took Zambia about six to eight months. For that to happen. So it means that Ghana can still reach a staff level agreement by the end of this year. And if government is not forthright and doesn't come straight, right, 
-hmm. and, and, and be realistic with investors, then a program will delay beyond 2022 okay. because investors are going to hold out. Because it's about negotiation. It's about restructuring. It's a negotiation. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that uh, you agree. So now this is what, this is what will happen. When the broad fiscal framework and the necessary adjustment that government itself will have to do are all discussed and agreed at the staff level, that will then be the basis for engaging creditors. That okay. you know what? I found myself in an unsustainable debt uh, level. I, I, I need to come out of this. We will all be better off if we come out of this. But in order to come out of this, this is what I have done. Okay. I also need you to meet me halfway. So the debt sustainability analysis, a staff level agreement, then becomes the basis for engaging creditors. Well, and we'll, we'll definitely, we'll, we'll we'll definitely we engage further on this. Professor Godfred Bopping, we're grateful. We'll have to leave it here for now. But this is a discussion that will continue and we'll definitely fall back on you uh, for more on this. But we've also been hearing from the minority spokesperson on finance, Kaisel, Dr. Kaisel Latoforsing, also on this. For him, the president goofed in giving that big assurance that there will be no haircuts. Uh, first, I don't know the basis the president made that statement. But if you run the math, it doesn't add up. And I'll be surprised that Ghana will get an IMF program without a haircut. And I can also say on authority that there will be some form of haircut. Uh, clearly, someone is not briefing the president properly, or probably the writing did not come out well. In quote, the president goofed to into an IMF program that they will not go for an IMF program. In the end, they went for an IMF program. I can also say, in the same vein, he has made a categorical statement that there will be no haircut. We are watching. In the end, there was going to be another. This thing hurt the president's, uh, what do you call it, credibility. His handlers must guide him properly because clearly there will be some form of haircut. Yeah. He shouldn't have made comment on this haircut matter. He should have allowed it to lie low and probably find a better way to deal with the speculation. But his statement on the debt restructuring alone has caused different form of speculation in the bond market. Today we've seen some bonds rallying, obviously in the sense that they think there's not going to be domestic bond, uh, uh, what do you call it, some form of haircut either side. But that will mean that any time there's another announcement that there's going to be a debt restructuring, the situation will get very worse, worse. So please, please, um, when a president is making certain categorical statements, you have to first run the match. Don't let the president make statements when you have not run the match. That's Dr. K. Salato Force in there. But President Ekofado says government will, by May 2023, review the standards required for inputs into the country, as well as review the management of our foreign exchange reserves in relation to imports of products. In his first address to the nation on the state of the economy, the president said the current rate of importation is a major cause of the depreciation currency. We're making some progress with the 1D1F, but our current situation requires that we take some more stringent measures to discourage the importation of goods that we can and do produce here. To this end, we will review the standards required for imports into the country. We will prioritize the imports as well as review the management of our foreign exchange reserves in relation to imports of products such as rice, poultry, vegetable oil, toothpicks, pasta, fruit juice, bottled water, and ceramic tiles, and others, which with intensified government support and that of the banking sector, can be manufactured and produced in sufficient quantities in Ghana. Government will in May 2023, that is six months from now, review the situation must, as a matter of urgent national security, reduce our dependence on imported goods and enhance our self-reliance, as demanded by our arching goal of creating a Ghana beyond aid. Much as we believe in free trade, we must work to ensure that the majority of goods in our shops and marketplaces are those we produce and grow here in Ghana. 
That is why we have to support our farmers and domestic industries, including those created under the 1D1F initiative, to help reduce our dependence on imports and allow us the opportunity to export more and more of our products and guarantee a stable currency that will present a high level of predictability for citizens and the business community. Exports, not imports, must be our mantra. Well, let me bring in the Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association, Samson and Saki Awingobit. We are grateful. So you heard the President, export, not import, should be our new mantra. I suppose you're putting your house in order to get ready for that to happen. Well, thank you very much, uh, and good evening to your chair. Um, I must say uh, that uh, we at Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana uh, see this to be very ambitious. Uh, Without planning, without policies being put in place, uh, of course, if you look at the items that His Excellency the President have made mention, uh, are very unique to us. Uh, but however, as we speak, we're talking about from now to May next year, 2023, uh, we could not take such a short term measures to be able to control or to put uh, a leverage on our city. That cannot happen. I rather see that the president is rather going to add more hardship to the Ghanaian community. Indeed, 2022 farming season, we all saw how our, our farmers all over the country cried loud for lack of fertilizer, which the government subsidized for them 50%, I think, in 2021, in 2020, in 2020, in 2020 then in 2021, the government subsidized the fertilizer to them, to the, our farmers, at the rate of 30 percent then in this year 2022 we saw that the the the, the, the fertilizer subsidy went down to 15 percent that is why we saw and because gather all many of the fertilizer importers that's why we saw the fertilizer importers decided to sell directly to the farmers because 15 percent was too woefully adequate and so we are even in the harvesting season yet what is the cost of our our produce and at what metric ton do we have, be it rice farmers, be it maize farmers, be it yam and whatever. Yes, it is good for us to preach ambitious, but I strongly believe that the government needs to take it slowly. Mm. We need to be serious. We don't get to do the talking. If the president was addressing the country, he was not on the political uh, platform. And I strongly believe that I was expecting the president to outline what measures, from total pragmatic measures, that his government has taken into consideration. Is he talking about medium, long term, or short term? If it's the short term, then of course he should better be aware that he's rather putting the national security at threat because there's going to be a full total food insecurity in this country. Okay, but I can tell you, what timeline would you w recommend as the right timing when it comes to achieving this particular mantra that the president talks about? Well, thank you very much. I, that's what I was talking about. We should be talking about five years. We should be talking about six years. Then the long run, we should be talking about 10 years. Okay. I strongly believe that medium term, well, maybe from two to three years. I, 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 I strongly believe that uh, government rather uh, see to it. In fact, even those who are bringing, you talk about frozen food, those who are bringing poultry, day old chicken to, to feed to our poultry industry, those who are bringing the the, the, the old chicken. If they tell us how much they are paying in duty at the airport, how much they are paying in duty, I strongly believe that I was, I was expecting the president to look. All those who are bringing poultry, the lives the old chicken to feed our poultry industry will no longer pay duty. Okay. Then we know. All, okay. there's, there's going to be uh, a free feeding for our poultry producers because if you go to the bony area, even greater than crowd region here, the poultry farmers are talking about the high cost of feed that they are using to feed their poultry. And that is why we cannot produce at the capacity. I was expecting to see the president tell how much money has been given to how many poultry farmers. We know about Corona Dako that the government gave him some money some time ago. At what metric ton can he produce in a day? Okay. And so I strongly believe that uh, once the president was supposed to talk about it, uh, he didn't make, make mention of those things. Okay. I.e. the flat rate for business community, i.e. at the port which the deputy minister of trade announced to us, i.e. talking about reduction of petroleum products so that transportation will come down for food staff, even 
product being produced within Ghana here is even much more costly. Cost of borrowing and the cost of utility salary for every industry, AGI and their, their membership knows very well that it is not about import that is destroying their market, but as a result of utility salary and cost of borrowing is key. Okay. I do not see the president talking about that. Okay, and Mr. So Wingobit, we'll have to leave it here for now. We're grateful uh, for your time. That's Samson Asaki Wingobit speaks for the Importers and Exporters Association on the president's mantra that by May 2023, we ought to be importing exporting more rather than um, importing that he says should be our mantra but we can hear some of your views and reactions to so the president's address uh, some residents in the Ashanti region the voting powerhouse of the ruling new patriotic party some of them have expressed discontentment over the president's address on the economy however some residents of Kumasi who spoke to Lava Femmes Emmanuel Brightquick who have also regarded his address as empty one that lacks pragmatic steps to salvage the sinking economy we can hear some of them very honest, no, he didn't. Why would I say so? So, what we're expecting from Nanado's speech was a speech of reassurance. Ghanaians were expecting him to give us a speech that would make us feel happier. Russia Ukraine war, COVID, these are conversations we've had everywhere. We hear it every single day happening. Now, the question is, what are we supposed to see? He still gets us hearing blames of we are not paying taxes. Then the question is, what happened to E Levy? You hear him telling us about inflation rates. What exactly are the kind of differences we're expecting to see? We didn't get any of that from the speeches. The day. For me, I felt like it was a below par speech for the president, and it's not something we were supposed to see. Why would I say such a thing? Notice fully well that after the speech, it didn't calm anybody down. People are angry this morning. When I even entered the Trotsky to Tech Junction, everybody in the car was angry. The only big thing we hear is Sikam Pedede. So, what do you get from the Sikam Pedede? Is it that we are the ones making the noise, or the money is the one making the noise? We think we need more clarity because most of the things are like they are just there. We are not getting the kind of impact we have it to have. So, why are they? But I feel I fail. Ah, no buyer, how many years in it? Any six? And can you two years? I fail, mom. And I'm about to cancel the year. And I'm about to cancel the year. And I'm about to cancel the the president's address did not go down well. If he knew these measures earlier, he would have implemented them, but not now, when he is about leaving office. Even his comments about money disliking noise was unhealthy. Yes, and the Mrs. Sankawe, or Chakawe, and the V18 here, there's a Sansu, it's competitive. You're to the Martin, and all my boy, why I say a genet, yeah, in the panel, or mining and in the panel, you know, and no money too much, no man paying that so beyond far and one year, one point two. I've got to idea fifty cities, five million. We as a people must be considerate about the profit margins we want to make. We are in all this together, even though the president is putting in place some measures, it can't restore the economy. Because Oh, if you say, you can't feel like it all can't work in the MCC. Last time, in the next three days, going up there, we cook a tough war. I mean, you should deserve a car. We tough war 18.99 pesos in Ghana as a per liter. Now, if you say the consumer of it, you know, maybe I'm one more here. I think what he's rolling out would help, especially with the fuel. Some of us aren't breaking even. So, if he's in talks with international fuel marketers for affordable ones, then it's Meanwhile, government is confident the measures outlined by the president will turn around the fortunes of the economy. We can hear from Information Minister Kujo Ponkuma. The president earlier had met the governor, the Association of Bankers, the Association of Forex Bureaus, and they had briefed him, particularly the governor had briefed him, on measures to ensure that there was adequacy of Forex for legitimate purposes in the banking halls and at the Forex Bureau. 
So you notice that as part of his measures, he talks about fresh inflows of dollars to provide liquidity to the foreign exchange market. So they gave him those assurances of the adequacy for those who need it for official purposes. And even for those legitimate official purposes, government is making efforts to deprioritize the importation of items that we can produce here in Ghana very easily. And then for those who are involved more in buying dollar and putting it down, or in hoarding or in speculating, efforts at discouraging that. So that is the two-way approach aimed at ensuring that there's adequacy for those who need it. Well, we heard him talk about dollar inflows um, going forward, but where exactly it's coming from, if you were to tell us? Well, I think we have announced that already, 750 earlier in the year, and another about 1.3, which has started coming in. That comes to a total of about $2 billion. Well, the issue about petroleum products also, we know that it continues to rise on the market. And there's a prediction that a litre could hit 20 cities by mid-November. He announced also that he's working in to bring cheap products to help alleviate the suffering of the people. But give us more details about this and how it will work in the deregulated sector that we operate currently. And if the cost of living challenge we are having is driven by fuel pricing as a first point. The fuel pricing then translates into higher food and transportation costs. And once food and transportation costs go up, you have the cost of general goods and services also beginning to pick up. Then you have a fourth layer of people beginning to respond by also then pricing higher because everything else is going higher because they also consume everything else. So if you want to tackle the cost of living, one of the things that you need to tackle at the root is the frequent escalation in fuel prices. The deregulated market we have here, where BDCs import from the uh, big companies, you know, on the high seas or from the refineries, wherever, and bring them in, uh, is contributing to the quickened escalation of fuel prices.